Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, March 31st, 2024. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. (laughs) And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the podcast that didn't determine technical difficulties. Episode number 734. <laughs> Up to here. You know what? You can blame it on me. Please, on the edit. <laughs> no, you can blame it on me. I started this whole like diatribe complaining about system updates and how it fucks up things, and here we are. Not that no. that's exactly what's happened, but. There's that. In any case, what's going on? Um, really, in some sense for me, some sense, I got nothing. I got nothing. Except uh, being told that by the middle of May, our project is going to be moved to Cincinnati. And guess who's going with it? And but Damon already lives in Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> and my ass ain't moving. <laughs> Not right now. So in the near future, we're going to have two uh, hosts of Cubs Out Loud in Cincinnati. Two hosts in Ohio. In person. To host in Ohio, that's kind of, I don't think that we've had that either. Yeah, we have. Chester? Oh. He didn't start in Ohio. <laughs> he didn't start uh, the show in Ohio. Yeah, that's true. But he did end up moving to Columbus. I was yeah. like, he was down the road from you. Like, not next yeah. door, but like, you know, an yeah. hour and a half anyway. Away. Yes. So, as part of this, I decided, okay, if I'm going to move, there's a bunch of shit I, because I'm not just here anyways, and some things are here, even though I'm not using it, using it, or it's busted, but functional. Um, I've decided I'm basically not taking most of my furniture i have decided Mm. at least maybe three pieces of furniture my tv stand and two bookcases which are currently filled with dvds which the reason why i'm keeping the dvds is because i move into the place i'm probably not going to have internet right away but i will have a Blu-ray player. Ah. So I've got a plethora of things, and if I lose internet or something like that, I've got video entertainment. Besides, and I don't have to, like, just go on my phone and play games on my phone all day. Right. So, which recently I had to do because uh, for some strange reason my internet went out, uh, Within the last month or two, I can't remember when that yeah, was. Yeah, it's been. It was recent because we had the we couldn't have a show. Yes. Oh. <laughs> we'll it talk was about this that month. later. 
<laughs> so because of that, I'm like, okay, I'm not taking my king size bed. Cause one, I I live alone and don't have a dog anymore, so I really don't need a king size bed. And plus, that shit's hard to move. That's some heavy shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, two, my couch uh, that I got when I moved into this apartment uh, from, or not this apartment, but one or two apartments ago, uh, from some local family friends, uh, it's busted. <laughs> and upholstery is ratty and stuff. So I'm going to read, read that. I had a nostalgia trip of a big overstuffed armchair, which I don't really use at all right now. I just got a bunch of stuff on it. Mm. So I don't need that. So I won't take that. My dresser uh, is busted from the last move. The, the moving helpers they tried their best. But before that, there was also one of the um, uh, drawer bars uh, had gotten loose. And I never fixed that. So I've had that for years and years and years and years. Maybe it's time to, to just get rid of it and get it, get a new one. Yeah. So with all that, I'm like, okay, so here's my idea. Once I figure all the shit that I am taking, kind of sorting all that. Oh, and my computer desk, which was originally bought in 2006 when I only really had to deal with one monitor before the whole multi-monitor thing started. And I only had one computer. Now I got two. And I currently have three monitors between them. Uh, I need a bigger desk. And maybe one of those like L-shaped ones. So I can have my desktop workstation and I have my laptop workstation all in one spot. Right now, my second monitor is on a ta tray table. My laptop monitor is actually on a tray table. And my laptop is actually on top of an old dog crate. Covered in boxes because it's one of those wire dog crates. So I'm not taking that. This chair is getting kind of ratty. So I'm thinking of also getting a new computer chair. So I'm thinking the first thing when I find a new apartment, maybe two things. I'm going to get a computer desk. I'm going to get that set up. I know this sounds like weird, like priority thing, but I'm going to start off by getting a desk, a new computer desk, and uh, a futon-ish type thing. That way I can use that as a bed until I actually get a bed bed. I'm bringing my TV stand so I'll be able to set up a TV so I'll have entertainment that way, etc. So I've got plans for like the initial investment into the new apartment. Obviously, I'm taking my kitchen and bathroom stuff, clothes. So the next purchases will probably be first, maybe just a dresser to start with for my clothes, which to begin with, I can just lug in boxes and luggage and uh, and then like set up in the closet uh, to begin with. So it'll be kind of messy, but then get a dresser, then a bed, basically then just kind of like slowly build up over maybe a couple months because I went to Amazon and went searching for things that I wanted to for my apartment 
guess how much I put everything in my cart of what I was looking at. And I'm not necessarily going to buy all these things from Amazon. This is more of like general looking at pricing. For uh, the furniture and some ex a couple of extra things, the total comes to approximately $2,160.25. Which includes the desk, the futon, uh, a bed, a uh, sheet for the bed. This is also a full size, so not a queen, not a king, a full. A desk chair, a new TV stand, a nightstand, a dresser, a coffee table, and a 4K TV. So Jeff, but you said you were bringing your TV stand and TV and entertain, basically your entertainment center. Why are you getting a new TV? Well, one, I got this TV in 2006, 2007. So it's old, it's 1080p, right? Well, I had a thought. I'm going to have a smaller bed, which means in the bedroom, I'll have a little bit more space. Have the put in a new dresser that that will take up some space, but I could set up a TV in my bedroom. Have a 4K TV out in the living room, which, by the way, this $2,160 does not include one an, another thing, which I couldn't like get priced into to a cart here. A new Apple TV 4K, which I would connect up to my home pods so that I could play the play it through my home pods having one in my bedroom and one in the living room means that I can like play something that as I'm like traversing the apartment I can easily hear wherever I am mm -hmm. which I kind of can do now but in addition it will be set up so that it would be a because the 4K one uh, Apple TV allows for a function to be able to play like if I'm watching something on my DVD player, I can actually use my home pots through the Apple TV 4K as the speakers. Hmm. So a little upgrade to my apartment. I mean, the next thing that I'll probably be looking into is like smart light bulbs so I can like set up voice activated things. So basically, I have big aspirations. Am I planning on spending all this money as soon as I get to get my new apartment? No, I'm going to spend some of it. And then as I get Fair. paychecks and have a little bit extra money, I'm going to get one thing at a time. I'm probably going to see about a uh, dresser and bed would be after the the desk, desk chair and futon, which shouldn't be that big portion. I'll probably be a couple hundred dollars between them because I'm not trying to get something that's like super expensive. Mm hmm once I get all then the bed so I have something that's more comfortable than a futon, etc. Neat. So, so I've been got doing a... shopping. Right. So you've got a plan and I think it's reasonable. I mean, in a way you're kind of like starting over and you know, there's some reality to like picking things that are not necessarily meant to last forever mm -hmm. because you just need stuff to be functional for like a year mm -hmm. or whatever. 
Um, the other thing I would say is like for some of the longer term stuff or whatever, you can't obviously do this long distance, but once you relocate, you can check out and see what there is locally in terms of like thrift stores and, right. you know, options along those lines. Cause you might, yeah. you never know, you might come across a really nice bedroom set. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, I'm one of those and... people who, who like, I'm already going to be like overly stressed from this move to begin with. And fortunately, right. because I'm relocating for work, my work will be able to reimburse me uh, for for a bunch of the process for the moving. So there's going to be some plus things, and I'm going to have to figure yeah. out a way to organize receipts so I can submit my claims. Um, uh, and the reason why I'm going to gradually like work my way up on a few things. I need to figure out how to get rid of a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm probably going to have to hire junk some removal. junk removal. Yeah. And just so you're aware, there is an Ikea here. Um, not that that's like long lasting oh, furniture I, I, kind of thing. I looked at the a, Ikea stuff. Yeah. yeah. I was like, there's an Ikea near us. There's an Ikea. The in futon, maybe that's a, an option to look at the the ikea so yeah. as i said i did shopping on amazon just to be like in some sense this is a checklist more mm-hmm, than it mm-hmm. is like a actual, actual. shopping list hmm. and i'm i'm thinking of trying to get stuff that's lightweight so that or you know less of stuff if possible just to minimize that if for some reason I'm moving and I'm one of those people who I get super anxious when it comes to moving. I, it's, it's hard for me to deal with it. I, and this is since forever. So, um, Don't mind me. this is going to be rough. This is going to be rough over the next couple of months for me. Just stressing about, Trying to figure out where to start my apartment, figuring out what I am taking, what I am not taking, getting, trying to get a junk removal service, uh, organizing yeah. things, which I am not organized <laughs> in the slightest. Oh. And, uh, you know, and then figuring out like the process for the lease. And also, there's a few more questions like, Hey, I know they're working on trying to get me some remote access for work. So I don't know if that, uh, for, uh, the time, because the full setup, because I work for a vendor, I don't work directly for the company I'm doing the actual work for. So we need to set up because I'm actually going to be on an actual company site instead of the client site. Uh, they need to set up everything up at the, the that. That's not going to be ready right away by the time they want us all there. So they're going to get us a remote access. Can they get us a remote access and then let us, let us, while we're still here, work from home for a little while so that we can, you know, give us, make it a little bit easier for us to organize our stuff to get ready and to move then it's dealing with, okay, what can I do with the leasing office? When am I actually going to make the journey? There's a lot of questions, a lot of things that are up in the air. What I do know right. is they would like me there by the somewhere in the first two weeks of March, but they're full launch, but I don't, they're giving everybody until the end of May, not March, May, end of May mm-hmm. to be re- relocated. So, so you kind of have some, you have a bit of time, but not right a ton, ton of time because we're literally going into April right now. Yeah. One of Mar- the reasons they want me to be in early Mar- May, keeps wanting to say March, but it's May early May is because I'm the trainer. So they're going to be hiring new people there and they need somebody to train them. So hmm. A lot of stuff. 
Indeed. Oh. And honestly, I need an adult. You need an adult? I I literally need somebody to like push push me, handhold me through the entire thing. I I, I need a, a, a a support person. But um how much support I'll be able to get is I don't know. And I'm not very absurdive in asking for those things. So I might end up end up at some point like trying to meet with my manager and be like, hey, let you know. I have no idea what huh. I'm doing and I need help huh. getting through this. Huh. Anyways, well, that's me. Huh? Um, because it literally just came through. Um, a friend of mine sent me a link to some of her books oh. that you might want to look at. So, I will send that to you after the show. So we don't look. So we don't sit here and look at it now for like twenty thirty minutes. Anyway. So here's the nice <laughs> thing about moving to Cincinnati. I've got someone to scout. My my pointing in the right direction. Yes. I have somebody that can scout apartments for me. By the way, Helping in the best way I, can. Uh, I will say this. My dining room will not be a dining room. It will essentially be my office. Well, interesting. Anyway, I'm not going to look at this. I'm going to try not to look at this. Later. That's the plan. But that's, I'm going to look, look at it later. That's me. Other, otherwise, I've been, you know, doing everything that I've been doing before. Damon? Oh, geez. Um, so, um, earlier in the month, Jim and I went to a home and garden show. Um, we've been looking to get some, I think, a couple of things done. Um, one of the big things that's on top priority of our list, um, our bathroom upstairs has been a half bathroom for a while. Um, we haven't been able to use the bat, the sink, the shower. We have a shower up there um, because there's been a there's a bit of um, there was a leak, and the leak has warped the floor, and then also it had gotten to a point where the um, shower bed, the shower bed had cracked, and it was starting to leak down here. But that was a while back. We haven't been using it for quite some time. Um, so we've decided this year, <laughs> with after last year getting a new roof and um, AC unit, and you know paying for a wedding, that <laughs> we would um, look into getting that done. So we went to the home and garden show, and it's a home and garden show, so you got to see a lot of different things. So um, other th projects were put up, one of them being um, our security system. We've had it for a while and they happened, a sales rep from that, um, our um, security system happened to be there. Just we ran into them randomly. Um, so we've got set up that set up eventually to do some upgrades to our security system, which will be nice. And um, we're looking separately, our retaining wall next to our driveway um, in the front yard has been um, cracking a bit. The front of it has been cracking. There's some loose stones. It's a um, deep rock. Is that what I'm thinking? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Jim, Jim, Jim's the person that knows that word. <laughs> but uh, so we had that looked at, had got an estimate for that. We have a couple of other ones that we're been looking into, a couple of other companies to look into for that. Um, but the main thing is we're going to have someone this week come check the bathroom. Um, they sound really good. They're actually a um, like bathroom, not just a like throw a bathroom on top of your bathroom, like, you know, like do the front new bath or things like that, where it's like bath fitters and all that stuff where they throw things are actually someone that can help with our leak potentially. Um, redo our floor and all of that, which I think mm -hmm. is going to be really good. It might be a little pricey, but it, it might be, it's going to be worth it because we have to, 
every time we have to shower, which is, you know, every morning or whatever, we have to come down here. So we have to go up, wake up in our bed upstairs and come downstairs. So it'll be nice to have a bathroom to you. Um, so looking forward to all of that. And then this month, um, we started the pledge line for Onyx Great Lakes, our new pledges, um, full brothers, um, crossed that threshold a couple of weeks ago in Detroit. Um, I was fortunate enough to be a part of the process of interviewing these fine people to take their next steps in their leather journey, um, which I appreciated. And um, I now, as the associate liaison, have been part of the interview process for associate applicants who will be joining us. This year, we had 25 applicants, which is a big number, amount of people for um, to join an organization. Um, and we've gone through all of them. The, the pledge line is now 12. And we've got 14 applicants for associate. And the pledge line has, the full pledge line has five associate members that are crossing over to full. So just to kind of get the numbers in there. But yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, they've already started their process and it's been, they have their first night, bar night doing things in Detroit um a few weeks ago and we have next month or next month literally tomorrow um in a few weeks we'll be doing the associates having their interviews with the full brothers to um see who will cross over from there that's it for me wow yeah gary um, I just said rolling, rolling, rolling because I feel like I've done a lot of driving, um, <laughs> and I kind of have. So, yeah, uh, I've been to the state capitol twice already this month. Ow. Like I just got back on Thursday night. I was also there two weekends before that, um, and it feels like I've been there again recently, but I guess not because I'm looking at the calendar. <laughs> and then I'm about to go back there in two weeks, and then I travel again at the end of April, beginning of May for something – well, the thing I went to this past week, the statewide coalition, but it's in a different place. Two weeks after that, I go back again to the state capitol, mm. and then two weeks after that, I go to the nation's capital. Oh, Wow. So basically every other week, I just realized from now through Memorial Day, yeah, two weeks from now, two weeks after that, two weeks after that, two weeks after that. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> and most of that is driving. Um, mm. And I'm very happy and pleased that I have a brand new vehicle. Uh, <laughs> um, and even though I'm driving like a grandpa on the highway, I don't give a shit because I am getting more than uh, like – almost nearly double the miles per gallon by driving at a reasonable speed instead of speeding like every other motherfucker out there. Um, so that's all I keep thinking when people are like, you know, blowing past me. I'm like, man, you must be made of money. <laughs> Watching all that gas just burn up. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, there's that. Um, and I've just been like burning the candle at like both ends and in the middle. I've got too many hats at the moment, but there's a lot of shit going on. So, sounds yeah. like it. Well, I mean, I've got two jobs. I'm on two nonprofit boards, and now I think I already announced this a while ago. I'm president of our local. So there's just a lot of stuff. Plus, there's work. Like my main job during the day has a bunch of things going on with it. Um, so yeah, there's that. Mm. And the and the second job I feel bad about because, like I said, I'm going to be gone. A bunch of times and so every time I have to leave and go out of town I'm not working my second job so there's also that impact mm -hmm. so you know and then hopefully things will die down at the end of May and I don't think I'm really going anywhere in June 
although I was asked to speak at a function as part of like an opening, not quite keynote, but um, we're doing a HIV like treatment today kind of like mm. session with local providers. It's being coordinated by the University of Pittsburgh. Um, and anyways, because I'm the chair of the local task force and kind of like help push to get this thing, they asked me if I would be willing to speak about like the state of HIV in our county. Wow. And I said, sure. And I, well, I mean, I checked with my boss first and she's like, I think you'd be great at that. And I'm like, thanks. <laughs> so <laughs> there's that. Um, but that's not really requiring travel. And then, oh, shit. And I also forgot I'm going to be uh, at the begin at the beginning of May. I'm going out of town for a weekend. That's right after I get back from going to the coalition thing. God bless. Anyways. Traveling. Yeah. Yeah, it's, well, here's the thing. I have put, let me do the math. I have put one third of the total amount of miles on my car. Okay, the amount that was on it when I when I bought it, I have already put a third of that on the car in the first four months. Wow. Now, to be fair, this car was not driven a lot in its first two years. Ah. Three years. That's why it was such a great deal. <laughs> Because it had low mileage. And I'm driving theoretically a regular amount of miles. But notably, I've already put on it a third of what of what the previous total was. And it's only been four months. So, and, I'm, and I was thinking ahead earlier this year about whether or not I wanted to like trade in the vehicle to get a different one. Ironically, the dealership that I took it in to have it inspected and stuff sent me a, a letter. It's sort of a form advert, which irritated me, but... It reads like it was handwritten, but it's not. And it's like, hey, we noticed you have this vehicle. Would you be interested in selling it? I'm like, oh. Already? Oh, yeah. Well, because it's a good car. It's got low mileage and stuff on it. It's been well taken care of. And so, you know, they're like, would you like to sell it and, like, you know, get another vehicle? And there's a part of me that's like, hmm, if I could save money on it, absolutely. Like, if I could get a newer car and lower my car payment. Mm. then I would be interested in that. But I'm waiting because I'm trying to pay off a loan that I have that was like from the previous vehicle. It was a, it was a very small like amount. Yeah. And I'm just like trying to – so all this travel, basically I get reimbursement on some mileage. So I'm using those to like pay off this other mm. loan that I have. So my hope is, is that I can do that and then – be okay with that. As a separate thing, um, I got notified by my landlord that my rent's going up, which is not necessarily a surprise. It's not astronomical, so I'm okay with that. And also, yeah. I was informed by uh, Spectrum that my internet's going up. Give them a call. And nobody's kind of shocked by this. Yeah. Well, I already told you, Damon, like, I haven't had a chance to tell Jeff. So in my neighborhood, I got a notification that the local fiber optic internet supplier is expanding their service region and I'm going to be a part of it. So probably in May, I'm going to find out if I can get onto that. And if I can, then I'm going to get better internet for roughly the same price I'm paying right now. So there's that. Yeah, I'm hopeful. We'll see. Anyways, there's just a lot that has happened in just a few short weeks. Yeah. That's one of the downsides with moving is I'm losing my Google Fiber. Yeah. We do have Alta Fiber here in Cincinnati, just so you know. I know. But it's not Google Fiber. Anyway, move right along. But I'll be choosing that. So. Uh, now it's time for... Gary. Uh, we don't necessarily really have any feedback in my area, so I'm going to punt it to Damon. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. We have some new, we have a new YouTube subscriber. <laughs> Woo! So welcome, Bear Media Archive, to <laughs> Gary Digital. <Digest. laughs> That's what I just took the S off subscribers. It's not plural. Nice. It's a welcome subscriber. To, welcome, welcome, Bear Media Archive. Yeah. 
would be interesting to check out their YouTube channel if they have one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Gary, coming back to you. Uh, how about Patreon? So, uh, yeah, over in Patreon, we want to wish a happy six year anniversary to Uber level patron Q. They joined us March 8th, March 14th of 2018. So we thank Yay. them for their six years of dedication and support to Cubs Out Loud. Uh, we want to give Big Bear Cub hugs to our patrons at the Cubster level, Charles W. and Michael K. At the Ooh Bear level, Dave T., Lee, and Michael Q. And our buddies, Hadrian, Lloyd, and Michael B. Thank you for all your support in making this podcast. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, how about this crazy month? Yeah. So the wild thing is this month had five Sundays in it and yet it's one of our shortest months we've had in a while <laughs> because, um, we had an away week that was unplanned because we had a double whammy. Uh, -huh. uh, Jeff had no internet and I also was sick. Um, Sick is kind of a, a loose term. Uh, I got my you are second, recovering. <laughs> yes, I got my second shingle shot because um, I'm an older person and I should get that done. And uh, so I'm perfectly fine with getting vaccinations for immunization purposes because mm -hmm. I would like to not have shingles as I get older. And so uh, it's a two dose regimen, pretty far spaced apart. And I got my second one finally. It was supposed to happen earlier, like I think in February. And then it got postponed. Anyways, I finally got it done, and it kicked my ass. <laughs> and I was not quite ready for that. So because I got that done, um, Damon and I actually had recorded COL Drag Race in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and he knew that something was... Baby. <laughs> it was a little... Back. <laughs> Honey, there was, there was some... You were... I mean, it was fine. We got through it. But I, I think once that, like light the light went off as it were it was like and done <laughs> and see yeah yeah so anyways that being said it, it, i was perfectly fine with us having an unplanned away week because i was not feeling well i was yeah getting my ass whooped so much so I didn't, even work on, I didn't even go to work on monday it was serendipitous that jeff's internet had had conked out and we right weren't really going to be able to do a show anyway so it all kind of worked out I mean, I had planned the immunization on the weekend on purpose. I just didn't expect it to, like, kick my butt so bad. So, like, I, I mean, in the afternoon to evening of Sunday, I, like, texted my boss, and I was like, I am, like, I am not going to make it to come in tomorrow. I, I was just like, my body is whooped, and I need to rest, which I did. So so that was the beginning of the month. Then we did, uh, then we did the COL 732, what's going on for the month of February, which should have been the week before. Mm -hmm. And then we had a planned away week where we did mm -hmm. a flashback to episode 58, like going way back in the archive to flashback. geek powers activate in form of fanboy. So if you want to listen to like a younger sounding Jeff and other <laughs> like voices you and names you know nothing about, um, if you're newer to the podcast, that would be uh, a way to do that. Right, I'm just going to do that. <laughs> and then last week we did uh, 733 let's talk about tattoos and then we were going to do a different show tonight but our guest had something come up unexpected so we pivoted and we're doing what's going on for the month of March on the very last Sunday in the month of March but it looks like we haven't hardly done anything <laughs> this month well We've all done something. It's just, yeah. The show didn't do as much. No. <laughs> Bunch of stuff happened between the two WGOs. So. There you go. Here we are. <sighs> Correct. And that must mean it's time to. <laughs> Enough of that. Uh, Damon, what do you got? For okay. Us? So I have a couple. Uh, my oh. first 
<laughs> my first is is this thing on boingy um, boingy and, boingy boingy yep it's from stack of veggies um or at stack of veggies sacks of veggies Ooh, there's an s in there sorry i'm totally abstracted just shocker God um damn. yeah but we have our a very handsome sexy tattooed bearded daddy belly type uh, guy and he is naked with the second of like the shirts you know around doing the around the um head thing with it up he's fussing with his nips which is ding for me and um it's it's definitely turning him on as it were so yeah absolutely that um I am writing, typing at the same time. So yeah, yeah, very sexy man, very, very, very sexy. Um, love the tattoos. Since you know we had that tattoo episode a bit ago, just I would be would love no stories. Anyway, I can sit on your lap and you can tell me all the stories, Dad. Um, and then the other one, um, I thought I had shared before, but I don't think I have. It says American fans are wild, and you have this very cute, cubbish, builty, rugby guy, um, and he's having the time of his life dancing around, twerking his ass, um, and he's in a kilt, and then he rips the kilt off, and he's got just like a pair of shorts on, so, um, and he is thick-thighed, thick butt, just Beautiful, 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 beautiful man. With a nice package. Yes. And well, so here's the thing. He's a rugby player. Well, he's, he's a fan. We don't know if he's a player. Oh no, he's a he's an actual he's rugby, a rugby player. player. Yeah, they found him. Children, <laughs> I, Papa investigated. I saw this video when it first came out, and I was like, "Who the fuck is that?" Because, like, everybody started thirsting over him, and I was like, surely, like, there is something about this that is trackable. And it is. He is, like, a rugby person, and he, his sister, like, ended up commenting and sharing, I think, on Instagram or whatever, that this was her brother. And then all the, all the feed of comments was like, hey, like, is your brother single? Is your brother available? Like, you know, I mean, it was, it was bad. It was bad. And yeah. uh, he even replied, and I was like, okay. Like, so my understanding is that he does play rugby. He is a member of, of our of our team, so to speak. Um, but to, to my knowledge, does not have an OnlyFans, does not have an alt Twitter account. So there's that. <laughs> Carrie did the deep dive. <laughs> Baby. Don't get me wrong. I a did. man with a badunka dunk like that and a package of thick thighs, I was like, who who, who the fuck yeah. is that? He is, he is deliciously thick and... Um, it was, it was, again, so this was shared by, um, Dirtiest Bulk, but it's obviously not Dirtiest Bulk. Dirtiest Bulk is a sexy man himself, but that's beside the point. Um, but the video is, it caught me off guard and I was just like, wow, that's just nice. And he is clearly having fun. And that's, I think the best part. And he is sexy AF. Um, I did find his, I found him on TikTok. I follow, did I follow? I don't think I followed, but I did find him on TikTok. Um, Elko Kitano or Kitano. If you're looking on the TikTok. Yeah. It's a fun, it's a fun Twitter. Like, yeah. Which I'm, reading through, I'm reading through the thread. It's killing me. Oh, I'm sure. Someone said this is both my gender and my sexuality. And then someone like someone says um, rest in peace as DMs because you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's gotten quite the number of follows probably very quickly. Um, but yeah, he's sexy. He's he's sexy. Don't get me wrong. He's sexy. So that's me, Gary. <laughs> I'm just laughing because people are like, I could watch this for hours. And someone's like, I want the entire video. <laughs> and I'm like, well, oh. it's just a it's just a snapshot thing. Anyways. Right. 
Mm-hmm. All right, so I've got two. The first one is very artistic. It's just called Pan. Um, and this is um, by at L-A-R-C-O-M-B-E underscore, which I think is Larcombe. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say. It's someone I've been following for a while now, and I really enjoyed this particular photo. It was shot by at the stag room. Um, they said that the full photo shoot is available on their OnlyFans. Link is in the bio, of course. Um, it's got a couple thousand like hearts, a couple hundred mm-hmm. like reshares. It's been viewed apparently over 60,000 times. It's just a really great composition photo in like a like mossy wooded area with like a creek in the background with some rushing water. But the boy is nude um, mm-hmm. and he is posed sitting on or leaning against a mossy like tree that's kind of like on an angle over the creek. Um, and he's got a, a bunch of ink 